Hello and welcome to that mini catch-up for Mission Impossible Dead Wreck. Everyone's favorite. Suppose we'll get, uh, we'll get jump Fallout's in, my favorite. Jump right in. Actually, wait. There isn't we're what? not gonna jump right into the super chat. We're gonna jump left in. Yeah. Or gonna give me just a second to grab me the I was we 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 nearly showed at the end, but we just, uh, just ran out of time, sort of. Thing. One from Bayo in the show for the Mission Impossible um, EFAB. Yes. Oh, all right. Yeah, let's see what we got. Ready? Oh, that is gorgeous. Ada. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Look at that. That's great. It's really good. That explains why he wanted me to ask the eye color. Yeah, because he got blue okay. eyes. Okay. So, oh, okay. Oh, I really like long cruise mission. Unpausable. Dead oh. framing mission. Unpausable. That's good. Simon platoon freeing rames. <laughs> <laughs> Ailey Rags well. Long Cruise. Rags. Produced by the <laughs> Fellowship of the Meme. Managed by JXC, written by some massive, directed by a big titted rhino. Screenplay by Metal Commander and Charlie. Oh wow. They wrote it. Uh I gotta actually go to the full. Oh my goodness, this is a big one. Let me let it load here and I gotta zoom in. Um Let's see, EFAP presents a Fellowship of the Meme production in association with Longman Mission Unpausable. Casting by Toxic Brood. Music by Rainbow Soap. Here we go. Production designer, Unformed. G crew catering and dragon feeding. Cinema Robert. <laughs> dragon resuscitation. Dr. Plagued. It's just EFAP good that everyone gets the credit, you know. That's good. Mission huh. Unpausable. I really like movie. that. It's great. Very much. You look good in a beanie. We've also got this. <laughs> I've just got in my tabs. <laughs> oh, uh, let's see. This frog got a voice. Look. It. <laughs> <laughs> the frog. First, people call me a duck, and now a frog. I don't look like a frog. I have green skin, a big mouth, a well-rounded personality. Frankly, I'm offended. <laughs> <laughs> the faces are very funny. I like your phone as well. It's very uh, a, a tablet. <laughs> I can't it sure. looks. It looks. Uh, yeah. Looks like a phone, sort of. Somewhere between, but yes, I like. I like this character. He seems very. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. Uh, there was also us as whammons that had been drawn. Look at us go. So. Let's see. <laughs> you know, I'll take it. Mm hmm. I'll take it. Another movie that's going to be out, presumably. I'll every take it. Every frame of women. Okay. Well, I mean, it's every not called frame. Every Frame of Men, so I'm not really sure. Every Frame of <laughs> like, Women. The name wouldn't change. Women can pause too, damn it. Exactly. <laughs> yes. And boy, do they. Wonderful. All right, so over to the massages we got for the stream. First one is, hi all, what's your rankings of the Mission Impossible movies, both in quality and enjoyment? Hi, Rags. Oh, boy. Hello. Uh, do we want to go, like, left to right or right to left? I mean, or... they'll probably be the same for all of us. I imagine they probably will well, be. Well, Rags so hasn't maybe seen it's... two of them? I have not seen Rogue Nation or three... Or okay. four. Uh, Fallout's number one. Yes, Fallout's number one, and then Mission Impossible 1 is number two. Yes. And then from there, uh, probably Ghost Protocol? It's, it's between Ghost Protocol or Rogue Nation. Yes. Maybe um, I would put them together. Okay. <laughs> I feel, I feel like slot. it might be what I mean. They, they, I feel like they 
mean, it's it's close between those two. Not in an amazing way, to be honest. Mm -hmm. no. <laughs> okay. uh, and then, and then probably three. Oof. Then careful. Dead reckoning. <laughs> Where's he going? Oh, I I figured that the question because it would have been asked before we talked. So this is this is pre. This is pre our discussion on our Fallout. Is oh, what I the mean, ranking is. Yeah, but this is post us having seen Dead Reckoning. That's Rackening. true. So are you gonna, you're really gonna, you twisting my arm here. You're really gonna make me <laughs> pop, pop it in. Where does it end up? Where does it end up for you? Oh, I, I, I asked you first. But if you want me to go first, if you're gun shy, that's okay. It's, I mean, in, in the mix there is is it's between two, three, and uh, and Dead Reckoning, right? For the uh, number four slash five slot, one would say I know, that. I know yes. when I, I know when I, hmm, or do I? I mean, two <laughs> I mean, is at the bottom. <laughs> two is at the bottom. I really hate two. I really hate two as well. <laughs> two it's sucks. Really, it's a really shit movie. So it's it's a battle between three and Dead Reckoning for that. Uh, man, that's gotta be that's gotta be an upsetting sentence, isn't it? <laughs> well, I mean, you know, uh, uh, that's voice, why they come here. Vo I voice mean, concern if you feel it, but I think I mean, Mission Impossible Three is better. The, the entity is Philip like Seymour Hoffman is genuinely great. He is uh, compared to Gabriel. It so at sucks. least you have that. It's it's still got a lot of like standard plot issues, but then you think about the entity and all of the plot issues stemming from that. Oh boy! And then there's of course the argument to be made that three doesn't do much damage to the prior films, whereas Dead Reckoning ugh. actively ignores all of them. Okay, Except randomly so where that, it doesn't. So is that the ranking then? Fallout by a considerable margin, then one by also a considerable margin among the, the rest. There's a big gap after the first two, you're saying? Well, I'm saying there's a big gap between Fallout... Like, Fallout is one of the best action movies ever made. Yeah. Um, whereas, like, would, Mission Impossible agree. 1 it's is... Really Mission Impossible good. 1 is a really cool movie. So I feel like there's a gap between those two, but then there's also uh -huh. a gap between Mission Impossible 1 and the rest, unfortunately. Yeah, I'd be inclined to agree. And then there you go. Four Rogue Nation, uh, three Fallout, uh, not Fallout, uh, Dead Reckoning Part One, and then two. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So Ben Shapiro released a review of Mission Impossible: Dead Reckoning. He has, yes. Yeah, you guys want us to look I'm... at all of his reviews at this point? <laughs> like... it? Every every new film, the Barbie review by Ben Shapiro. That could be funny. <laughs> But, yeah. could it could funny. be really funny. I, I floated it, funny. but now, now I can see that being now, funny. Yeah. yeah, it sounds like it really could be legitimately <laughs> interesting what Ben Shapiro's views on the Barbie movie are. Yeah. Uh, hi, Massives. I left this as a comment on a related episode, but please do the next Sins vs. Wins on Everything Everywhere All at Once. Fits the bill. It doesn't fit the bill, unfortunately. As far as I'm aware, Cinema Sins' video on that film is actually... Uh, he takes. It, I, I'm almost certain. I remember Jay telling me about it. He um, he goes positive. He doesn't go negative. Okay, so even that film that couldn't that couldn't uh, that couldn't get him over the edge. Um, if I I, was normal format. I could be wrong. Maybe I'm inventing uh, memories here, but I'm almost certain the video came out and Jay was like, yeah, "Oh God, not... here we go." You know, like <laughs> he's gonna fuck up everything every all at once, and then um. Uh, I think he ended up saying that the video itself is actually not that bad, but I could be okay. inventing memories here. Right, and in that case, it doesn't really make it fair. It's got to be a good movie that CinemaSins still does the standard format for. Well, here's a, one of the top comments is, this is a gold standard for CinemaSins. It deserves an Oscar in its own right. It was awe-inspiring work. I think he does something right, in this well, video that he doesn't normally do. Okay, that's, that's not very fair then. It needs no, to be a normal be CinemaSins video. We'll, uh, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. One day. Uh, in the first movie, Ethan Hunt hit his head on a metal door, so you see, Mission Impossible was always silly. It's a movie about spy wizards. Mm-hmm. True. Mm. That's a good point. A shilling for the IMF meter. Thank you very much. I'd like to test Molly and Fringy Simpsons trivia, so you can name the most 
Hi, I'm Troy McClure Bits from Memory. Bonus if you remember the episode. Uh, I'm going to be honest, I really can't name any of the Troy McClure ones uh, off the top of my head. The day we kill, tomorrow we die. And Gladys the Groovy Mule. Those. Yeah, I, 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 uh, I've I, never memorized them, actually. The President's Neck is Missing. That's one of his films. <laughs> 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 what the fuck? <laughs> I uh yeah it's tough. I think you beat me on this one cuz I I've just never memorized them. Yeah, there's loads and I the fact that I can only come up with 3 shows you like I don't know I don't I think they all kind of blended together at some point for me. Yeah. Um oh yeah. We tried. Do you guys remember the 2005 no. War of the Worlds movie with Tom Cruise? My interest is sparked again because of a fan horror survival game based on the film. It's still in development and looks neat. Uh, I do remember that film, yeah. I remember liking it, sort of, kind of. I think it's fine, but I can't... It's been ages since I've seen it, so I can't be sure. But I think it's fine. I remember liking the first act, and then not liking yeah. the third act. Yeah, that's kind of my memory of it, too, that at some point it kind of, uh, it just becomes a lot less interesting. As I remember movie. feeling quite, like, impacted by the arrival and attack of the tripods yeah yeah i i uh i like a lot of the scenes that were going on there i remember that one of the scenes from that film that i always really uh found interesting was when they were they got attacked in their car because it was like the only car that was working and so it was kind of like uh in these desperate situations people can get uh can get pretty dangerous eat each other mm-hmm uh, the breathing box detected an uh-oh while it was far underneath the sky juice, so they fired a water missile. Breathing box sub. A marine. And sky juice is water. Water missile, of course, is the torpedo. Torpedo. <laughs> torpedo. <laughs> torpedo. <laughs> Smiling face with heart eyes. Oh, thanks. All right. Okay, Thank yeah. You. Yeah, that's nice. Hi, Massive's longtime fan. Unsure if you're up for more Star Wars, but I give my left arm to see an EFAP mini on the 2003 Clone Wars. Not the Dave Filoni series, but the two hour long miniseries by Jenny Tartakovsky. It's in two volumes, both on YouTube. Or Jen, Jenna D. Jen D? I actually don't know how to pronounce his name. I just know who he is. And he made Dex's Lab Samurai Jack. And um, uh, also, well, that show, which I've heard I've, is better. I've heard than, it's, uh, the it's good. Uh, so maybe. I can believe it. Um, yeah, I would it. be curious to visit it sometime. Because uh, I remember really kind of liking it as a kid when they were coming out. And I was like, oh, this is neat. Frongy, defend Endgame from a Morley critique. All right. Oof. Am I going to pick? Okay. Hmm. Trying to go for something that's the hardest to defend. Yeah. Um, why didn't they go back and get more pim particles if that was actually limiting their overall ability to go to places they wanted to go defend okay so i need to defend it against i mean so i mean i could i could like really try or i could do like a bullshit argument <laughs> i think they want you to really try do your best possible argument you could do in favor of uh do my best possible argument in favor of okay uh i think the best argument that i could make oh wait no i was about to say maybe they don't understand you know maybe this is at a point in the story where they believe that you know if they change the past that will change the future but that mm. i mean unfortunately hulk made it very clear that he doesn't believe that's the case that it is impossible to affect the past. Um, oh, oh, I mean, it's kind of, I don't think there's really an argument once it's put out. The only argument I could imagine would be like, I mean, wow, like what point are you even trying to make here? The reason why they had it so that they didn't get more pin particles is because that would have removed all of the tension from tension. that final battle. Yeah, that's and right. it's important yeah. for the time heist for there to be a sense of tension, because without a sense of tension, there the you story go. is worse. Haven't you read exactly. uh, X Save book the cat. about... <laughs> I don't know if it's in Save the Cat. Haven't you but, heard you Kick know, the Dog? One of, one of those <laughs> free writing books. Leave, no pin particles allowed. Well, it's I funny because... Yeah, that's say probably there there's a couple other ways you could go meta, but like in universe, best thing you've got legit, I think, is they forgot. That's all you can do. They forgot. That, that's the best argument could you could make, and that's bullshit. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they forgot. Film's really bad, guys. It's like one out of ten. 
<laughs> I apologize in advance for any unread Mega Man Super Chats. Lots. Don't read them for Fringled's sake. I'd rather not have my favorite podcast hate one of my favorite games. We wouldn't, it wouldn't be that. Just... I, don't, I don't dislike Mega Man. It was more like, I think it was just because we were getting so many Mega Man questions. <laughs> Um, especially Fringy, since he would be the one most likely to enjoy Mega Man. They're great games with great music. Fringle, don't let me ruin it for you. Uh, I really... I, I haven't listened to a whole bunch of the music from Mega Man, but I do really like it. Mega Man 2's got a cool, uh, got a cool soundtrack, and I'm sure that I would like them, because, I mean, I generally like platformers. Uh, though I actually don't know which one I would start with. I, because there's so many Mega Man games, <laughs> I don't know which one I would be meant to play. Uh, cool to hear you enjoyed the Burton Batman movies, but what score would you give them? And may Allah forgive me for saying the O word objectively? Oh. Hmm. Um. Uh. So, 89 and... I think Returns is stronger. Um, yes. They've both got issues, like, uh, big old contrivances, plot armor, you know, sort of usual stuff you'd expect from the plot. Characters are both pretty solid, though, in both movies. It's just that Returns is dealing with more layers, I would argue. They achieve more with what they're doing with the characters, I believe. So yeah, I think um, around um, probably seven seven area. Um, I think uh, for for returns, you mean? Yeah, for eighty nine, I guess um, six probably. I'm, yeah, I'm probably yeah, more in like five to six. Returns, or, uh, yeah. Five to six is probably my range for the for Batman eighty nine. Uh, whereas, yeah, I'd say Returns is probably a seven. It's it's a good movie. Yeah, I don't think any of those two veer into bad at all. Um, nope. And Returns has so. got a lot going for it. Oh, yeah. My dad disdained Mission Impossible 1 because it hardcore assassinates the OG TV show characters in the opening and turns the leader man into evil bastard. A TLJ moment for him as a boomer who knew the show. Different continuity. Uh, uh, it's uh, different yeah, continuity. Yeah, uh, different continuity, right? They are. I understand or... that um, if they made a TV show adaptation of the OT and Luke was... Fucking, I don't know, evil or some weird shit. Like it would be annoying, but I wouldn't write it off entirely. Mm -hmm. Um, I'd want to see how how they do what they do, and I think Mission Impossible no, One does a good job with the the twist and what they're doing in it. I think so. Though I understand, obviously, if yeah. it's a character that you really like, and then he's made into the villain, be kind of lame. And that but, is uh... now the sort of it takes over as the zeitgeist understanding of Mission Impossible. You know. Mm -hmm. Oh, I mean, at this point, it absolutely has. Yeah. But, I mean, I'm I'm not kidding. That's what I said on the stream at the beginning. I don't even know how many Mission Impossible fans remember his name, that character. No, uh, uh, maybe the old school, yeah, fans of the, the television show, but... They probably would, yeah, point, more I'd likely be, than the film fans. I'd be surprised how many, yeah, Mission Impossible film fans, like, remember the names of even the major like, any villain at this point. Uh, like Lane Walker, um, like uh, what? I, at this one, I mean, I just watched the movie and I can't remember what the guy's name from three is. Kevin, <laughs> not not three. Uh, Reggie. Uh, uh, four. Wait, who in four you asking about? I can't remember his name. He was just John Wick uh, guy. Oh, that no, I I never. Th I don't even think I ever heard his name. <laughs> I don't know that I. I just, I'm sure yeah. it was mentioned. I it just probably was. It. Oh well. Yeah. Uh, hey, massives. I'm semi interested in making videos. I wanted to get a laptop anyway. So should I start by trying on a laptop or just get a PC? Uh, I mean, fundamentally, whether or not you're getting a laptop or a desktop is just going to depend on, like, if you need portability or not. If you're, like, traveling a bunch, if, if, you gotta, if you're moving around a lot and you're not always at home, then maybe a laptop's a good call. But if you're typically at home when you're working, desktop's going to be cheaper, and you, you're you going to get, like, better hardware oh. relative to the price that you're paying. But if you travel a lot, then a laptop, you just need to pay a lot of money for one that's going to be good for editing. Um, also, if I do end up making videos, what software slash hardware should I use? Microphone, audio interface, any video editing software recommendations would be appreciated. All I can do is tell you what I use is uh, Damn, yeah. now a sure microphone, but I still recommend the AT2020 is really good. That's even what it's called I'm... now versus like a new vision or something. Um, I'm currently using that. Yeah, I'm using an AT2020 USB+. Plus. It, it's really good because you don't need any interface for it or... Audio box, it's just like USB, plugs light in. Yeah. 
And it sounds really, really great. As you can tell and from, you know, my videos and stuff. If you want to get a mixer to get more options, is that something that you just need to consult panels that know what they're talking about when it comes to mixers and video editing yep. software? I use Vegas. I think all three of us do. Uh, I yeah. use Vegas, yes. You know, I've I would, I'm well. not going to be claiming that that's the best one. I, I don't know what's the best one. I, <laughs> I hear that every editing software is amazing and terrible. So there you go. They all have their <laughs> own awful problems and amazing productions. If you're yep. uh, if you're using like Photoshop or other things in the Adobe suite, then there's Premiere. But yeah, if you're not really using those, then you could also go for Vegas. I both of them have been fine for me, essentially. Also, also, uh, should I play the Deus Ex games? Yeah. Yes, you should. I would say yes, and I haven't played them. <laughs> so. Uh. Also, also, also play Little Nightmares. Also, also, oh, hey, also, also. Else Hi, Rags, Mubes, and Frongold. Hello, hey. hi. Best of luck on your video um, endeavors mm -hmm. if you choose to pursue them. Yeah. Sell them fringy storytelling juice, please. I my storytelling juice isn't ready for distribution. Do you have anything that's ready to go? No. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. Uh, why didn't the AI buy the key for a few billion? Buy the key from Why didn't who? the AI do a lot of things? I'm, That's I'm, a good point. I think it's fair to ask. I just don't know where, where and when in the film it would... Who would it be buying it from? Well, maybe it would be more so that whoever has it just offer them, like... An, an amount of money that they would never refuse. The thing is, I assume that's what they want us to think about all of its henchmen, that they're all getting paid. I guess. But, I don't know, man. Like, everyone's relying on the second film to make sense of all this. I, I wouldn't hold out. <laughs> for that. I'm not optimistic. Yeah, if it's the same crew, uh, optimism is not high. Look, I mean, it's just writing a story about, like, an AI who's the villain is already... Like, that's just difficult. It's just yep. difficult. Because... But you have a lot of room to make the AI all kinds of different things. Not all AIs are the same, and all of their powers are not necessarily the same. You have well, many be, options. You know, typically you have the, the AI is evil. Uh, it might be worthwhile to explore, not necessarily that it's, like, the correct choice, but that it's not just trying to take over the world in a self-serving way. Yeah, I mean, uh, who knows what they'll do in a second. Maybe they will. Uh, maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe they'll they'll give the. I don't know. The entity was pretty pretty evil sounding when he was faking Benji on the uh, on the phone there. <laughs> yeah, it did seem. That's the thing. They've remained relatively vague enough that they kind of could give it any motive in the next film. Which is, it's kind of. It feels like they put a way more focus on Gabriel, but like of the two, it, for all of the problems that the entity has, I would still be more interested in what that thing's goal is compared to Gabriel. He's just a lame, <laughs> crazy guy. Well, yeah, they've got... They've got to fix Gabriel up now. Yep. Like, uh, we actually need to make up for lost time. We had a whole movie with him, and I've seen a lot of people complimenting, <laughs> like, well, you know, he's quite, he's got quite a look, and, you know, he's intimidating. Like... I don't know. I feel like Lane had two really cool looks and actually was a character whose motives were well, to some extent. Well, Philip Seymour Hoffman just like, looked like Philip Seymour Hoffman. Didn't really have a, a cool look, but he was the probably the best villain of the Mission Impossible series in terms of intimidation, anyway. Uh, probably, yeah. Um, yeah, he's like the only element of that film. <laughs> yeah. So, oh, animal of the day, the Tibetan fox. You're welcome. The Tibetan fox. Uh, hmm. Have a look here. Tibetan fox. Hope it's cool looking. I love me some cool animals. Cool animals are very cool. Look, he certainly looks unique. Oh. Oh, look, look at him. him. He's like a Chungus sort of small leg fox or alternatively big body. He looks like someone fox. tried to draw a fox and they didn't do the best job. Hmm. I think, yeah, that's a good way of describing him. But like you him can though. tell he's because he's very, very fluffy. So I assume that it gets very cold in Tibet. So he does really look like he could uh, deal with all those arctical temperatures. Something I wonder chilly, is if, chilly, the reason, cold. if the reason why he looks so chunky is because, um, I vaguely recall this about the um, snow leopard, like that 
the it's it's either that the lungs are larger and also the nostrils are bigger so that it can absorb more air from the uh oxygen from the breath from it the takes inner because, air yeah yeah exactly so i'm wondering okay. if there's something going on here that i'm not seeing or that i am seeing right for why he's so chunky uh honestly why is the key so important he has easily enough time to defeat the lock with cutting such drilling tools now right um I would imagine that when the sub is underneath the ocean and he's on his own with, like, no other people with him, that it could be really tricky. But then that almost, like, kicks a can down the road. Why can't the entity recruit more people to do, like, a deep-sea excavation of the, uh... Well, here's a question. Of the thing. Can you not lockpick? Um, I mean, if it's some super-duper crazy, like, key for some military thing, then I would imagine that lockpicking is probably out of the question. I don't know, I've been watching a lockpicking channel recently by chance, and uh, every single, like, uh, I guess I'd call it consumer-grade lock, he can unlock in, like, a couple seconds. And he says, like, it's, it's the easiest shit ever. A lot of them you can unlock just by hitting it hard enough with um, another lock. Like, they're that bad. Some of them w w that the look heavy-duty and, like, professional-grade sort of thing, you'll just be like, boom, 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 done. And it's just like, oh. <laughs> it's not very reassuring about locks, but... Uh, you know, the best of all locks of all time. I think he's got videos of, like, you know, defeating what's known as the best lock of all time in under 10 seconds, that sort of stuff. And I just wonder, right. especially when it's Mission Impossible, I guess that can go both ways. You could say, like, they have the technology to annihilate locks, but also they have the technology to have the greatest locks of all time sort of thing. It's yeah. Just, whatever the plot tells me, I'll probably just believe. It's, as, um, you know, it. I but I buy it if they said nope nope me. this key is so very special can only be this but but we did talk about it. it's like why can't that key be recreated it looks very recreatable it looks like yeah I mean the Russians certainly could make another if they made the first one so. yeah that that's probably the biggest yeah. fuck of all of it. So they they have the blueprints yeah. they made the key and again those Russians you never know they lost the blueprint damn it ah oh, no Ivan you dropped the blueprint why you do this. Dildo of dumb lost no audience because it never had one. Oof. Indiana Jones yeah. did have an audience at one point. I mean, it still uh, does for yeah, the old stuff. I guess it has a, a smallish audience. Just tell the scrolls that Earth is barely habitable. They're so close well, to I mean, having they're, to do they're that. About, they're about to make it barely habitable anyway. Yeah. I, I love how, like, none of the scrolls seem to, like, put into one side, obviously, the immense loss of human life that they're seemingly, like, okay with enabling. Like, why would you want to inherit a planet with destroyed infrastructure? Like, what's, what's the point of that? Why wouldn't you just go to, like, Mars or something if that's the case, you know? <laughs> just go to Mars. It's already barren. There's nothing there. And it's, it's radioactive. I mean, they could just live in space if they like radiation so much. <laughs> they like radiation so much. <laughs> they, they those creatures they from the first uh, Godzilla. Well, the 2016 oh, one? 2014? 2014. And also, didn't... or No, wait, it was because Godzilla needed that nuke from Ken Watanabe. And yes. then that woke him up. <laughs> a great movie, Shut up. Oh. They went down. They went to, like, Atlantis and set off a they nuke did. next to and Godzilla. And then he set off a nuke movie. next to him. Yeah, like, to help him out. To help, help him out. Yeah. Yeah. I think that the sheer color. force of the explosion would... Tear him to bits, but I guess not. No, he is indestructible. Remember when he's so, detonating uh, in the uh, is Portland, Boston, somewhere? I can't remember, but Boston, it's... and it just like melts the build. The radiation is so big it melts the yeah, buildings, and I'm like, oh, around him. we're never living here again. <laughs> well, it's just so <laughs> funny, right? They try to present Godzilla as like, yeah, he's the hero, the champion of humanity, and it's like, I feel like Godzilla's just doing his own thing. <laughs> Oh, you you don't remember the the end credits when they first oh. off when they butchered that good song, but secondly when they had all like the newspaper clippings about how all the, the world is healing, yeah, the earth is healing and all that shit. It, it seems to me like now I to be fair I I don't think I've watched any of the original Godzilla films from Japan, but I would imagine that the way that the story would actually be presented if those American films are anywhere close to, like, resembling OG Godzilla would be, not that he's, like, the hero of humanity, but that his interests kind of incidentally, occasionally align with humanity. I think that's what well, the first film was trying to nature, do. Right? He's the first film kind of tried to do that. That you know? got weird. 
Well, it's, it's the idea that he maintains some sort of balance and it helps humans, but he's also not, like, principally concerned with helping humans. It's just like, if he helps them, he helps them. But he's kind of his own entity and you need to respect him in the same way that you would respect, like, the weather itself, like, the climate, nature in general. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but then, no, they just made it, like, a superhero movie for Godzilla, except he melts all the buildings, well, that and, some of and, which would have yeah, yeah, him. From what I understand, Godzilla vs. Kong is, like, a, is a cartoon nonsense bullshit, and it's, like, it's so funny to see how it changed over time, because the 2014 oh, yeah, one is quite serious. One. Yeah, the, the tw it's kind of, you know, like, the 2014 one, I kind of like it. I kind of like it. Um, I even like it after Brian Cranston's character dies. I still kind of like it. I like the restraints it shows. Sony is through this. Sony is only trying to sabotage the Microsoft Activision deal because they never want to work on a Bloodborne remake or a sequel. You know that's uh, it's kind of, it's kind of interesting to see people talk about it through the lens of the console war when the implications are way bigger than just that. It's like a massive amount of media consolidation going on there, which now uh, FTC appeal got denied, so that's that's probably it. And I think that uh, recently they've. Uh, signed a deal, Sony and Microsoft, to keep Call of Duty on PlayStation for 10 years. We'll see what happens yeah, in year so, 11. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we'll see what happens when those years are up. But, uh, I mean, damn, man, it's like, they're paying as much as, uh, they're paying as much as, um, uh, Disney paid for Fox. It's like $70 billion. It's a huge deal. Jeez. Like, you know, you imagine 10 years from now, if they decide to not release Call of Duty on PlayStation, it's like, that's a lot of time for Sony to create a competitor, but, you know, still. Like, Call of Duty is a, is a pretty substantial head start. Well, it'd just be like if uh, FIFA, if they didn't release FIFA on, like, one of the platforms, that would just be, like, that would just, that would just be really tough for, for whoever's the one that doesn't have it. Because Call of Duty is like FIFA, or I guess now EA Sports FC 24. <laughs> Man, that's not a great name, is it? EA Sports FC. Mm. That's really not a good name. What does the FC Roll stand for? Football, I guess. Football club, maybe. Football club. Yeah, because mm. I lost the uh, the Fucking FIFA license. Cringe. Fucking cringe, indeed. Indeed, Mahler. I mean, no one EA. Please watch the new Transformers. It's peak New Age movie. So consistent, so powerful. Uh, um, the Beast one. Beast the Beast one. Formers. Yeah. I don't care. I'm just gonna be honest. Sorry. Man, I just don't, don't care. care. How many frames do you guys think you paused? Oof. Oh, I, I wouldn't even begin, begin to... to guess. Yeah, I'd have no nope. idea. Be right back. Uh, hey guys, what are your opinions on the Born trilogy? I haven't oh. seen them in a long time. I remember liking them, but I haven't seen them since they came out, and oh, I'm almost certain Rags hasn't seen them at all. Did you? Uh, did you watch? Uh, it was Jason Bourne. That was the last one that they did. I didn't see that, no. I did, and I don't remember anything about it. <laughs> so, not a great sign. How would you rank all the Mission Impossible movies? I haven't seen the new one, so my ranking would be 6, then 1, then Ghost Protocol, then Rogue Nation, then 3, then 2. We got wow. the exact same ranking as us, except Dead Reckoning would be slotted between 5 and 3. Wow. I think. No, wait, 3 and... Yeah, uh, between 3 and 2. Yeah. Based on uh, well, uh, we know, you know now, Yeah, right? they know now. But, uh, based on your take on Open Bar, I'd be very interested where you'd put Dead Reckoning. Well, now you really know. You know, all of the know. Um, do you think there's any chance of getting EFAP coverage on the Netflix Daredevil show before the Disney Plus one comes out? Probably not. That would be a lot. Probably loss. not. Uh, That's a three seasons of television there. 36 episodes plus. We'd probably have to cover Defenders too. That's yeah. more like 40. 41 episodes of television. It would be tempting to like rewatch it uh, in our own time, though, before the new one comes out. Uh, that's assuming that I even want to watch uh, the new one. I don't know. I probably will. When I don't the know how we can comes. give that one a miss and watch stuff like Secret yeah. Invasion and Loki. Yeah, that's true. Oh my that's god. True. Tom Cruise is overrated. There, I said it. I think... He is a fine actor with moments that are pretty good. He has a few pretty good moments. Um, he's generally pretty entertaining. Yeah, I think that's the main thing about him. I'm, I'm never. He never does anything on screen where I go like, "Oh, you're taking me out of it, buddy." Like, no, no. 
Quintessential movie you have, star. You know, stuff like A Few Good Men, where, you know, that's him, like, Or Tropic performing. Thunder. Or Tropic Thunder, yeah, that's right. Uh, Pom Clementif, F Taff, not sure, was really impressive in this, really, uh, really seen outside of her Marvel stuff in general. Um, it's so interesting, I've seen people say that she was, like, cringe in this, or edgy, or, like, uh, not something that people liked and needed more flesh, needed an actual character, but I've also seen people say she was incredibly hot and awesome and femme fatale and blah blah blah. I'm just sitting in the position of, um, yeah, I thought she did a really good job of playing, like, a psychopath, but I wish we had given her a chance to be more of a character. Especially being I that agree. she switches sides, that's huge. Yep. So, um, yeah, maybe we'll get more of her in the next one, don't know. When they said that humans are the weakest link, I thought the payoff was going to be that the AI blackmailed someone to kill people in important places. I think they are saying that. That all of the humans involved in all of this have been blackmailed or uh, bribed by the, the entity. Farewell and ado to you, fair Spanish massives. Farewell and ado to you, massives of Spain. I am gay actor Michael Douglas and would like an EFAP on Jaws. Okay. Tap on Jaws. Maybe someday. I don't know. Maybe. Pretty cool movie. Uh, it's also clear Chris wrote this movie before the whole AI surge because, man, he should have consulted any experienced programmer about the logic of it. You think? Like, that would explain that? I don't think he was ever intending on getting advice on how this would work. Like, Probably not. I think this is a classic, like, a writer bites off a subject assuming they, they can do it. Like, it's just like, yeah, I could do AI, sure. And it's just like, I feel like from watching your movie, you haven't thought about any of this for more than five minutes. Like, isn't it spooky? The AI is controlling everything. And then you're like, is that is that true? I feel like all the characters, if they knew that, would be doing very different things. I don't know. Yeah. Benji has a sniper cameo in the opening of Rogue Nation. True. Well, he's wearing he's wearing the sniper cameo. He's wearing, like, the, um... Sorry, not cameo, camo. It's, uh... Like it's like the outfit you wear in 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 uh, what's the what's the mission called in COD Four? Wait, which one? The uh, when you're um, you're doing the sniper stuff with Price. Oh, Price. uh, all gillied up. That's it, gilly suit. Oh God, those those missions, those the atmosphere. Ooh, incredible. Oh, so oh, good. Oh, the atmosphere was so good. Also high ranks. Hello. I insert anyone. Whoever is reading this in three months, how did you enjoy whatever terrible media that came out three months from now? The latest thing. I mean, the that latest thing is Mission Impossible. Oh, it was bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was pretty bad. Could have been worse. Could have been worse. Hi, Rags. Hello. Morla, the wife really liked Arcane, so no need for a divorce. Laugh my ass off, but she laughed at the suggestion. I'm glad uh, she had fun with good. it. I'm really good. I really hope the second season is uh, solid then. Bringy, when is Mauler playing the Halos? When are you? Not before you play Soma. Oh my god. Look at that Uno reversal. Both of you play them together then. I don't know if that's going to be suitable for me. <laughs> no, I just <laughs> feel like they're they different play. vibes. Um... Aforementioned SCP is classified as an info hazard, an anomaly where just learning about it in the wrong way can deal immediate personal damage. Neat, I guess. Oh yeah, because they've got SCP... I guess that's... I don't, I don't know what the dots mean. Is it... Revenant of the numbers, like 2-5? A longoid noodle demon that... Loves to snatch anyone who attempts to describe it verbally or in writing. Oh, is that oh, the one this they... Is, this, yeah, this is the one that I showed. This is 2521 that I showed you guys. Yeah, I think it was a really good one. I think it's really clever. And it was fun to sort of look at all the pictures and piece together how the SCP works and what it does just based off of the pictures. Uh, it's really... It's, it's kind of... I don't know if it's one of my favorite. That's a really high bar. But I definitely really enjoyed it. For and if being... you... Doesn't like pictures though, so official documents describe the entity purely in pictogram. Yeah, it um it can't understand pictures as far as we know. Um uh, but it yeah, it is a really neat little uh yeah, really neat little uh 
the SCP entry. And dear God, if you recommend me to read any, have them be short. Some of them are some of them are, some of them are long and bad. Some of them are long and good, but they're probably dear better God, off don't recommend instead of referencing ones. them just in the super chat saying like it's a thing that does this, 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 and then we can go ooh ooh because yeah, you can probably do it be. in under like a, a sentence, I'd imagine. Though I would, I mean, if it's really good, I would rather just get the link to the page because a lot of the times the way that they're written and described, um, they're essentially constructed as short stories. Um, so don't ruin good ones, but yeah, right. don't lead us on chases. Reminder, end the stream with mission accomplished. We did. We did. We did. That's right. Nailed it. Howdy all, haven't been able to listen to y'all as often I'd like to thanks to work, but hope y'all are having a fun podcast today. Keep up the awesome banter and God bless y'all. Also, hi, Fringy. Oh, hi there. Thank you. Work is alright. I mean, I guess it was a productive one. I don't know if it was a happy one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm so upset with this movie. I just rewatched Fallout and it still holds up. They did Ilsa so damn dirty. In good faith, yeah. I cannot recommend this. Agree. Fallout. It's just. It's just so bizarre watching Fallout. It just stands out above all of the other ones. It's just way better. It's way better. Uh, remember, Benji was okay in traveling in a driverless car when the entity could have hacked it and drove him off a cliff at any time. Yeah. Yeah, I thought they well, were gonna do. That. I thought they were gonna do something because <laughs> he like looks be nervously. And it's supposed to be he funny. Puts he puts on, on the, the seatbelt and everything. Yeah. That all they were thinking they were like isn't it funny because it's like oh <laughs> i guess i could die i mean does it what does benji not typically wear seat belts <laughs> that's actually a good point why even if it was a self-driving I mean, car that was trusted even if want it was a, a self-driving car it, yeah i mean does, it's, 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 does not, he not it's not good not a good joke benji not wear seat belts. wow uh also the entity growled every time it was on screen lol also high rags Hello. I guess you could call that a growl. The yeah, I mean, it didn't need to be making sounds at all. <laughs> yeah, a really hard silence could actually be a little bit more scary. Yeah, yeah. Hi, so. Rags. Hello. Please read out some of your favorite Jar Jar lines in your best Jar Jar voice. Ratchenheimer's for the good boy. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, I think we did this, but I can look up a few. If you want to do the next Super Chat, I'll uh, line up some... I shall. Uh, if yeah. the buyer key is fake, how does he test it? He doesn't. Another stupid part. It seems like everyone okay. knows that the keys are verifiable with each other, but apparently this buyer wouldn't have known that. Otherwise, it doesn't make any sense. Um, hi all. Love the content. As a delivery driver, the audio faps keep me entertained. Do you have any favorite video game reviewers? Uh, yeah, I mean, Matthew is obviously... Typically pretty high up. <laughs> I don't normally um I don't normally watch video game reviewers. Um however the two that I think I can vouch for pretty solidly are, as we said, Matthew Matosis and Joshua Strife Hayes. I've liked some of his stuff in the past, and I think he gives games a really fair shake. Uh he mostly reviews like MMO kinds of stuff, mm -hmm. but I have enjoyed his videos and he seems like a cool dude. And he's welcome to come on EFAP. There you go. You know of or have opinions of some call me Johnny. I do not know who that is. Or do I? But he's, he's probably a fine guy, at least. Any Maybe chance, even better. Any chance of getting Matthew Matosis on the show? More than welcome, whatever he would like. He, he was interested. very much welcome. Um... Hey, Dumbos, how would you feel if you hadn't eaten breakfast yesterday? <laughs> I am too. What do you mean? I did have breakfast yesterday. What are you talking about? Awesome, bro. <laughs> no, I couldn't make it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. What is this gibberish that you've sent us? I mean, I figured that if I hadn't had it yesterday, I probably still would have eaten something else at some point. So that would help. Uh, regardless, I'd feel pretty happy if you play DDLC at some point. Maybe, maybe. I, I do have, uh, I, I do have, uh, some, some Jar Jar quotes. Oh, okay, um, yeah. One thing that's interesting is that Jar Jar Binks only has a single Revenge of the Sith quote. Yep. He yeah. only says, ex <laughs> he only says, excuse me. 
but but he does it well. He, has, he can't deny it. Yeah, he does do it well. He earns his paycheck. Uh, but normally, when people go to their favorite George R. lines, it's typically from uh, Phantom Menace. But he does have lines in Attack of the Clones. He does like um, giving the emergency powers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's so right. Uh, it's a clear these separatists made a pact. We said these federation do trade. Senators, Delo Felagets, in Jeez. response to this direct threat to the Republic, Misa propose that the Senate give immediately emergency powers to the Supreme Chancellor. What, what were they thinking? I gotta with, be honest uh, with you, if I was in the well, crowd, no, they made, they I would need made, a translator. Is that, is that, I mean, I just sometimes curious. He's grown it's like, what, as a character. He goofs. What were they like, thinking? The lettering and pronunciations and changes words randomly. It's like once I've heard it enough, I'll get it. But first time around, I, I would need someone. To be like, <laughs> what the fuck is he saying? <laughs> he's a, he's about to send important. us to war. What is he saying? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> giving emergency powers. What are, to what are we man. voting for? <laughs> yeah. Are we voting for? Yeah, yeah. I just, uh. We who? Where's this guy from? Naboo, where's that? Who the fuck gave this guy power? Pokemon of the day, beware. Pokedex entry, moon. All right, I'll get that if you want to proceed. Hi, Rags. Hi. And kick Jay. And there's Fringy, look at him go. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Ironically, the mixed feelings I have about the writer's strike and now SAG strike makes it more compelling than most of what comes out of Hollywood. It's quite a conflict, isn't it? So many different oh. variables to consider. All right, I've got a I've got a picture of Beware, right? So this is what he looks like. That's what he looks yeah. like. What it looks like. Okay. So but isn't the Pokedex entry for this one crazy? Does he harvest souls? Uh, well, here we you know here we are. Uh, this Pokemon has the habit of hugging its companions. Yeah. Many trainers have left this world after their spines were squashed by its yeah. hug. There it is. There it is. Yeah. So I, I feel like I've heard this one before. And yeah, I do like the bear. Look at him. Look at him go. Maybe he that's looks just... all right. He looks okay. Maybe that's a way to go. Maybe that is kind of just like, well, the hug is worth I'm it. Getting hugged to death by this bear. Yeah. This is if you're going to leave this world. You know, that's one way to do it. I want the metal beer emote. Well, if uh, if we get another slot, I can pop that one in there. What can have getting drunk? Self a big old beer. Big old uh, beer. If I want you to check a Yu-Gi-Oh card, <clears throat> a Yu-Gi-Oh card, where on the Discord should I post it? The card in question is Olgo Justice for Hire. Well, we can do one, all right, for this with Yu-Gi-Oh as well. We've done a Pokemon. Yeah. We've done an SCP. We'll do a Yu-Gi-Oh. All right, yeah. If uh, if you wanna mm -hmm. carry so on, so will... RLM's coverage of indie movie, and I kept spitting on them throughout the review. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? So like spitting on your computer screen? <laughs> I was gonna say just <laughs> spitting on it. Oh, no. It just gets filled with, with <laughs> spit. Oh, here he is, Folgo. Here Justice, he is. Justice for, for hire. What, what is that? That's a. Uh... Oh, it's a big wolf guy. It's a big wolf with a sword. Justice okay. for hire, which like, kind of like it... almost defeats the per like justice. You shouldn't be able to hire justice, right? I mean, you like you pay judges, sure, but maybe maybe he's like a traveling judge. Well, Ooh, that's well, a neat guess... idea for a character. Like, oh, I, you need a judge? Do you want, want me to you know do trials and stuff? You know, if you pay me, I'll come by your town well, so and I'll bring like, some justice. So like arbitration, basically. Yeah, kind he's of, like, yeah. Like we so need someone to you know, arbitrator for hire, but it doesn't quite have the same. Uh... Or mediator for hire. Fulgo, attorney at law for hire. A attorney at law for hire, yeah. He looks pretty With cool though, sword. doesn't he, guys? He, does he should have a big cool. uh he should have a big gavel. Yeah. Yeah, he should, because the sword makes me think that you're just gonna go around and kill people. Well, it's just the sword feels more evocative of uh him being like a samurai, not a uh Yeah, kind of not, not a, a not, not a, a lawyer. Not a not a <laughs> not justice a yeah. arbitrator, mediator. Or any other barrister, you know. <laughs> really, anyone has, that has anything Crown to do solicitor. with the uh, legal system, you know. Fall guard, crown solicitor for hire. Um, 
don't believe politicians won't kill their own people, but at least three politicians have said they can nuke us if we don't listen on live TV. Keep up the good work, though, boys. Hi, Rags. Hello. You don't believe politicians won't kill their own people. I'm confused what you mean. Wait, what? I don't know <laughs> if this is in reference to... I think of would this apply to Dead Reckoning? Were there even politicians in Dead Reckoning? I mean, we saw like, like FBI, not FBI, but like you know, military. No, not mil fuck. Uh, like government officials. I don't know if. Oh, are they talking about the fact that I said that um the FBI, well, the director of intelligence said he's going to be using the AI to kill a whole bunch of people? I didn't say that's not something he would do. I said that that's fucking hugely fucked up. Like, he's a crazy villain, man. In fact, I don't even know how he got to that position, necessarily, because he seems to be unhinged, but... Sure. Uh, that, that's what we get, and then he gets killed, so it doesn't really matter that much. Yeah, I guess. Uh, Thanks, Gabriel. So, we got uh, Extinct Animal of the Day, and this this one's pretty cray. This is one of the ones that would end up in, like, a... I guess, crazy movie or something. It's the... Helicoprion. Oh, look at him. He's got like That's a Beyblade uh, mouth. mouth. Yeah, it's kind of like <laughs> I wonder what it's used <laughs> for. Mouth. I wonder what it's used for. Hmm. Like, does it, does it like scrape along things or? Interesting. Will... Yeah, that is very interesting. I wonder, yeah, I wonder what that like is used for, you know? Apparently it didn't work out so well, huh? Well, um, maybe the mouth worked just fine, but other factors, you know, contributed to its... Yeah, well, that's uh, a failing, failing to... of the fucking mouth design if it can't get him through whatever killed him, okay? That's, mm, uh, interesting. interesting. Or I have to be critical of whoever designed it if it couldn't even get him. Yeah. Like, if, if the whole thing got blown apart by nukes, then I can't say the mouth is very well designed. Wasn't that that French guy? Who, bustle uh, mouth? General? Blown apart? Oh my god. <laughs> what? Hi, Rex. I'm no historian, <laughs> I just, you know. Say hi back. Oh, hi, hello. The entity leaked the information. It wants to be found, or something. Maybe it thinks it's funny. <laughs> yeah. I guess we'll find out as time goes on whether or not. Because like, once we get to the end of the story, we can then look back and be like, why the hell did it do this and this and this? Yeah, they will have the the final damning indictment of that of that movie's plot. It doesn't really matter what it ends up doing at this point. It's done some crazy weird things. Hey guys, started late. You might have touched on this already, but Lawrence Fishburne was technically in two Marvel movies. Can you name the other one? Oh. You cuz I know he was Is an Ant-Man. You said he was in an Ant-Man and the Wasp. Quan no, Ant just Ant-Man and the Wasp. The Wasp. Wait, they said Marvel, okay. though. They didn't say MCU, so... Yeah, so I'm wondering if it's... Uh... Oh, he was... No, wait, that's DC. He was Perry. Yes, he was, yeah. Um... I don't know what it is. Um... Marvel? I have no idea. Marvel... Do we have to go way back to something like? Did he have like a part in Incredible Hulk or something like that? Or <laughs> that's what I'm always <laughs> wondering if he was in like Hulk or if he was uh, made a. Br he he's definitely not been in any X Men movies. What about the TV shows? Do those count like Shield and Agents of Shield? I thought he or... said, uh, movie. Oh, you know, movie. Um, uh, let me see. Lost the question. Um, I I think it was Marvel movie. Yeah. Annoying, I don't know. Would it be... Maybe it's some kind of like flashback in one of the other movies that he's briefly oh, shown I... in or something. That's he was very briefly in. Were they setting him up in Ant Man One? No, 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 they didn't. Because um, yeah, I mean, I'm even googling now. It says Fishburne starred as Bill Foster in the MCU film Ant Man and the Wasp, and that's the only answer to has he been in a Marvel movie? Yeah. Well, it must be something I... really small somewhere else. Oh. He was the voice of the Silver Surfer in Fantastic Four. Was he the voice of the Silver Surfer? Apparently, yes. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. 
<laughs> Give Rag some dosh for that M1 reference. Oh, thank you. Sure. Also, Mauler play Reservoir Dogs game. It's like Simpsons, but violent. <laughs> Simpsons was violent. It was funny as fuck. You remember but... the Quentin Tarantino joke in The Simpsons? Oh, I, I, do you mean the game or the just in general? Oh, no, no, no. The, the, the joke, remember, it was itchy and scratchy, but it was directed, guest director yeah. was Quentin Tarantino. This is what Many I'm saying. Boy. Violence is everywhere, man. It's in, like, breakfast cereal, man. <laughs> <laughs> and then she just chops his head. <laughs> and then they start dancing. <laughs> uh, something I heard, I don't know if it's true, was that uh, they wanted to get him to voice it, but he didn't want to do it. I don't know if that's true, but it's something I've heard. I can understand that, yeah. <laughs> AGB at least know that their keys are for the sub. Oh, they would know the keys are for the sub. That's true, yeah. Well, they they know that, and they know that um uh that they could remake the key. Oh, make no. Like Putin would know, or whoever is the president of Russia. Age of Ultron plus Putin. Eagle Eye equals Dead Reckoning. Lol. Well, uh, yeah, I mean. Uh, you don't want to be compared to those two, I'd imagine. I haven't seen Eagle Eye in a while, but I'm going to go ahead and assume I... it doesn't quite hold up as well as... You never know. You do never know. Two questions. Best new movie you've seen this year? That's question one. That's you've seen question. this year. But a new movie from this year. So it has to be new and... Has to have come out this year. That's my. Or, do, or can it just be anything that I've seen this year that's new to me? Because I know the answer to that. Oh, that I, I got a few. oh, yeah, yeah. That would that would be the best one. And I would entertain the idea out. that it's close with some other things, more than likely. But I doubt anything's going to be able to beat that. That thing was a masterpiece. What? Which one are you guys talking about? Boiling point for new films. There's in, oh, like, films yeah, I've yeah, seen yeah. I've seen a lot you of guys films I haven't with... seen before this year. You're not going yeah. with 65? No, actually. 65 no? was in the running for worst. Oh, the oh. The thing is that 65 oh, okay. is entering into a competition with things like Dial of Destiny, so it's like, oh, uh, how am I going to beat that? <laughs> it's like, it's going to be tough. Let me see. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, Tetris was pretty good. But it wasn't Tetris like... Tetris is pretty good. Tetris is pretty good. Um, I, would, I might even say it's better than pretty good. Um, I really... Yeah, it's not going to be Boiling Point. But I would, well, I would give an honorable mention to Tetris. It's good. Boiling Point, I think, came out like a year ago, right? Like, it's not, not from this year. No, but I said that it was... I only yeah. saw it this year. Well, I mean, it's, it's a lot of a lot of cool movies because I hadn't seen The Descent until this year, and that was a really cool movie. Yeah, it was. And uh, I hadn't seen A Few Good Men until this year, and that's I okay. uh, really, really liked that. And it's yeah, there's there's been some there's been some good stuff that I've rewatched. <laughs> that's for like a lot of mainstream movies this year. It's not been uh not been so great. Uh, the more cars fall off, the smaller the counterweight becomes, meaning that A, they shouldn't have stopped falling, and B, they should have accelerated. Oh, I guess it's, so it's saying you've got all the trains, one carriage falls off, and it manages to drag it so much that the next one falls off, which means that it's inevitable that all of them would come off at that point. I mean, seemingly. <laughs> but when it gets detached, there's less weight pulling it down, right? And yeah, there's more weight up on top. As long as one is enough to pull all of them across so that another one comes down, then why would it ever stop? I guess it depends on how the um, the first one falls and disconnects, right? So if it's... And it, and it also depends on the like the direction of force in, in the bridge, right? So... The bridge crumbling the... factor is important, yeah. We need to see how that's going. Yeah. So... Yeah, it's, I know um, what they mean, but it would. There's there a little so many, bit more that goes into it with the angle and. Yeah, there are so many factors that go into it that would have led to their deaths in so many very likely ways, but they, you know, it happens in exactly the right way that gives them a chance to actually get out of there. The biggest uh, and hardest thing for me to believe was um, a near-death woman holding up a man and a woman 
at the same time from like a complete fool. It's just like, but she's assassin lady, so she gets a strength bonus, okay? And then she dies. But then she doesn't die. Her heartbeat's still there. Yay. Person of interest did all of this so much better. Not seen it. Uh, I forget my brother's eye color after a week. Okay. I, I mean, okay. How often do you see your brother? Are you estranged, or what? What's going on there? Don't know. <laughs> Stop skeletons from fighting is a great channel. Stop skeletons from fighting. I enough. feel like I've seen a couple of videos from that channel. Sounds familiar. Uh, the Fiat reminded me of Johnny Smith's flux capacitor. Fair enough. Hmm. Hey, massives. So, rags. Hi. What are some guns Hello. you find overrated or underrated? Guns that I find overrated or underrated. Um. I think generally bolt actions are overrated. Um, as for, I think a lot of pistols are overrated. But that's mostly because in movies, people shoot them very, very accurately and well, even with minimal training. So I think they're quite overrated in terms of how easy they are to use and shoot. Pistols are difficult to shoot. Um, so think ones that are maybe underrated. I would say that... Um, Oh, that are underrated. Like ones we should see more of or that get an unfair. Yeah, a lot of the times people think that the original M16 that came out, um, they, they confuse it with later versions that quickly replace the, the, the original, right? So the original version of the M16 that was used in the Vietnam War had a lot of issues and a lot of problems, but it was quickly replaced with, you know, upgraded variants and stuff. Um, but people think it was just terrible, awful firearm, and it never worked, and it was, you know, shitty and everything like that. Um, uh, let me see. Under, and more underrated uh, and overrated. I don't know. Um, hmm. I'd have to think about that a bit more, because off the top of my head, nothing else really comes to mind, but that's just from, you know, being asked spontaneously. So maybe as the, you know, as this goes on, some more things will come to mind. Hmm. Oh, I, I will say, uh, yeah, uh, overrated. I, I hate to say it. I know it's an EFAP meme, <gasps> but... Uh, Desert Eagle. The Desert Eagle is very dun, overrated. Dun, dun. But it can shoot very... through almost anything. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for a gun that, uh, according to Jacob Kane, can shoot through anything. Except Batwoman. That's the only um, thing you can't shoot through. The Desert Eagle, I, and, as, and I have shot a Desert Eagle. Um, they are extremely bulky. They are very heavy. They're not very Man. fun to wield and shoot. And it was a little that I, I know they've they're 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 not regarded as the most reliable in terms of you know loading from the magazine and everything like that. And uh, I they are very cool. You know, in video games, they certainly have a place as the big, powerful, punchy, you know, handgun. But they are absolutely, definitely overrated. So there are a lot of recoil in uh, Modern Warfare Two. Yeah, they uh, the idea that you can just like pop 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 shoot that thing as fast as you can and hold you know hold down is like yeah fuck off no way um, those things really pack a wallop and they are they're big they are big um, let me get let me get you a picture of desert eagle size images they are just so big here let me get you a copy image. So, obviously, this will depend a little bit on how big this person's hands are. Wow, it's a big gun. That is a... Hey, Rags. Yeah, that is a really big gun. Rags. What? To check your notifications. Oh, no. Oh, no. No, no. Am I gonna... No! No! You've got to... I'm... No! I'm... You're fucking I don't understand. Me. How I don't does that understand. sneak up on you? <laughs> You forgot that? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> You're so mad. Yeah, no, he he's about as mad as I am, actually. <laughs> oh my I'm, god! I'm... The two of them are coping and seething, and I'm just sitting here like I'm, da -da -da -da. <laughs> I'm just oblivious. To whatever. This oh my is. good! I, I... 
Calm down. Uh, let's finish. I'm getting. Let's, I'm getting the peepo. You know, I'm getting the. I'm getting my peepo. You know what? Store up that peepo. Put it in a. Put it in a jar. We'll finish uh, responding to the super chat sent in by the viewers, the fans. That's right. The, the, <sighs> put the, it in the jar. Enjoy our show. Just put it in a jar. I'm looking right. for a little. Then, listen, okay, <laughs> we got. Peepo. We've we got eight left uh, messages. So yeah, you can you can you can make it explode. Right. So, and then that. afterward, yeah, exactly. All um, right, yeah, but the um the 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 desert eagle, yeah, it is overrated. And by the way, to the person who who brought it for the you know when I came, thank you very much. I, I really do appreciate that if you're listening. Um, I really did enjoy shooting it, but yeah, boy, uh, pretty unwieldy. Uh, and I think it's overrated. I think a lot of guns. Are like that if they're like big and you know sexy and you get a lot of oomph to them, they get they get overrated. Uh, you think uh, so? You, I imagine that you really really like the Glock, right? I really really like the Glock. I've got one next to me. I've got one that I uh, carry on me, and I've got another one. Um, I got another longer barrel one with a red dot on it. I really like Glocks myself. I like that they're very sim. They're very simple. They are, uh, I like their distinctive look. I know a lot of people don't, you know, a lot of people don't like it. A lot of people do, but I like that, you know, kind of square top. Uh, but I own three. They've all been very good to me. Um, and I like them. There's a reason you see a bunch of, typically the, the guns that you see the most in media are Glocks, uh, M9s, yes. and uh, P320s, I believe. Uh, let me double That check. rings a bell again from video games. <laughs> Yeah, you see a lot of Sig Sauer P320s. Um, you see a lot of those in movies. But I think those are probably the three most common semi-automatic handguns you see in movies. And what's your, uh, you were talking about favorite, what's your favorite semi auto uh, no, what's your favorite SMG? As Now, I've never shot any weapon that's fully automatic currently. But if I had to pick one and, you know, take it into a, a fight or carry it on me or use it generally... I mean, it would probably be a submachine gun. There's a few that come to mind for... I, I won't count PDWs, but the the very venerable MP5 uh, seems to be a really good choice that a lot of people go for. Um, but I think that there are some... Um, there's... what What is the... Just uh, the the PP19 Vityaz, which is essentially like a little nine millimeter submachine gun. Uh, it's like a little nine millimeter AK, uh, essentially. I've heard that those are pretty darn good, um, and and I'm familiar with that platform, so that would you know I'd, I'd get a lot of use out of that. But probably some some along those lines. There's a lot that I like, and it's weird. There's so many in games and things, and, I, and I've seen so many, but, you know, being told to just pick one um, all of a sudden. Uh, but, oh, yeah, probably like, a, yeah, probably like an MP5 kind of um, something like that. But there, there's a lot that I think that would be just fine. An UMP45 would probably be really good, too. Um, I always thought it was pronounced UMP45, but I guess yeah, I UMP45 I, is fine. Yeah, maybe I just do that. I don't know if a lot. Of, I don't know. I don't hear a lot of people like saying it, but yeah, UMP45 uh, is probably going to be a really good one. Um, a lot of the a lot of the like first generation submachine guns are probably really pleasant to shoot because they're kind of we're, we're so we're talking things like the. The Thompson and the MP40, um, uh, that are they're really kind of heavy. They're a bit over engineered, uh, so they're probably really a, a lot of them are quite probably pleasant to shoot. I mean, like an MP40 is like nine pounds, um, eight or nine pounds, and it shoots a nine millimeter round. So uh, you know, when you put that much, you know, you, when you have a gun of that size shooting a you know pistol round, it's probably really pleasant to shoot. I've heard that the the Scorpion, technically I think it's a PDW, but I, I think that the Scorpion is really, really uh, nice to shoot because it's it, it shoots a 9x18 Makarov, or no, or 380s. No, I think it's 9x18 Makarov. And even though they look like they wouldn't be pleasant to shoot, I just, I, I've seen that they're really gentle and they have a slow rate of fire. Um, 
but yeah, I, I, not to keep going on and on, but uh, there's probably a bunch that would be really fun to use. Um, All so right. That I would, yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, do you still have that book of fun facts? If so, can you read one? Oh yeah, I do. It's it's right here. I yeah, I've neglected to yeah. Right, it's literally in my hand right now. It's just right over the side. All right. Um. Uh. Okay. Sunglasses date back to 15th century China, where they were worn by judges to conceal their expressions while presiding over court. Um, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's interesting. I, I did not know fact. that either. That is a it very is a fun, fun fact. fact. Um, I'll do another just because it's been a long time. Let me see. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, the kitchen dishwasher was invented by the socialite wife of an Illinois politician. Not because she was fed up with a ho-hum chore of dirty dishes, but because she had had it with careless servants who too frequently broke her expensive china while washing it. Uh, I'll do another because it's short. The microwave was born when an engineer testing a magnetron tube noticed that the radiation leaking from it had caused the chocolate bar in his pocket to melt. Oh. There you go. So if you play with radiation, fame awaits. We crispy critters, I'm behind and so lost. Uh, as I said, Dead Reckoning is one of the most tangled movies I've ever had to deed. I guess untangle might be the word. You know, detangle has a ring to it. Just finished Final Fantasy 16. People are sad. That happened to I could believe that. Uh, not not a not what you would call a relentlessly positive game. Uh, in the film, the speedometer is at eighty. Yes, and you, I don't think you get the impression that they're going at eighty miles per hour with them on the top of the train. Uh, 80, 80 is that's fast. <laughs> Do you guys have any interesting stories from real life recently? Would love to hear them. Also, high ranks. Hello. Interesting stories from real life. Hmm. Hmm. I Let saw him out on a walk, and I looked at him uh, for a little while. When I went, I was late to see, I don't remember which movie it was, but the taxi driver I had, uh, as soon as I got in, started ranting about uh, Brexit and vaccines. Just He was going on it. <laughs> and I was just like, Brexit's uh -huh, old mm -hmm. news. Yeah. yeah, no, he, he was really bitter about it all. Um, I'm not... I, and, yeah. He was so Welsh that even I was struggling. I was like, oh, I'm not sure what he just said, but I'll just go, mm-hmm, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, of course, yeah, mm-hmm. Mm. Um, it was funny, because by the end, he was like, uh, but hey, you know, I hope you enjoy your movie. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wow. <laughs> <laughs> like, like what, what he told me should have destroyed yeah. my whole will. <laughs> if those damn foreigners hadn't ruined it. <laughs> but hey. Yeah. Always I don't think I... I told the story not too long ago about I went on a walk and uh, I saw the, the green heron that had uh, snatched the dragonfly and ate it. And then on the way back, I saw a hawk that was pouncing down on a, I think it was a, a, a robin or something. I think it was a robin. Uh, so I saw some I double gonna say, examples um, of predation that one uh, little trip. So you saw the walk. opening of Prey, or near the opening where we see the whole food chain up to the predator, remember? That was really cool. Yeah, that was really cool to see that. That was cringe. Is yeah. what it was. We got an I, alien um, movie on the way. People are saying hopefully it's as good as Prey, and it's like I don't know. I, I, yeah. Prey, Prey is like yeah. the step in the right direction. Yeah, Prey is. is a step in the right direction, and it did have like legitimately good stuff. Like Tabe is a really awesome character. Um, a predator ripping apart a bear is cool. Yeah, and there was some neat, there was some neat stuff in there, but unfortunately, our protagonist was a uh, really not good and did a lot of dumb shit and had a lot a decent amount of plot armor. Um, and there's some kinky dinks. So yeah, but it is a step in the right direction. Um, do you, oh yeah, okay. Oh well, was there any others or also high ranks? I I was Hi. saying with I I saw I saw a bird just hopping around like a. You go. Little crow, just I mean, little crows aren't that small actually. They're kind of chongus, just hopping around, looking around at stuff, and that put a smile on my face. I guess they're small um, compared to a helicarrier, and both fly. So 
That, I, well, I mean, that's well compared to a uh, compared to like an eagle, uh, but compared to a lot of other uh, compared to a lot of other birds, especially birds you see in like urban areas, crows are relatively big. So I I guess a mildly interesting story. My when I went up to the Seattle trip recently, I have family up there, and they're very very big into family history. Who is who? Where do they come from? Who married who? How many kids they had? They're very big into like lineage and family tree stuff. So we went up there. We learned a lot about, you know, the who's who of our past and where we came from and, you know, who is related to whatnot. And one of the cool things I learned was that in uh, my great great uncle in World War II, he was uh, that they had this letter and it was written to my great great uncle in World War II. Because in World War II, America, we sent the USSR a shit ton of, like, armor and vehicles and planes. We sent them a lot of planes. And it was his job to teach the Soviets how to actually, like, fly the planes and handle the planes. And they had a letter that was um, from 44, 1944 in March, that was written by Major N.N. Kalinikov, uh, essentially saying that, I really like, um, I really like the job that he's doing and I appreciate it and I would really like for him to stay and teach us how to like fly and operate these planes still because you know it's 44 you know you need that sort of help so that was really neat to kind of have that uh that letter uh our family doesn't have too many people who were you know who did military stuff we're not really a military family in general so it's nice to kind of have that sort of thing in there and so it was neat to have that and hold it mm-hmm Imagine if instead of inventing the cringe backstory with Gabriel to mess with Ethan's head, they had the entity use masks to recreate a young John Voight, Jim Phelps from MI1. Such wasted potential. You could have that it's always Gabriel under there, but he keeps putting on the masks of all the people that uh, Tom Cruise has killed, just to freak him out. Yeah. Then he puts on one of, like, his wife or something. <laughs> Why not, right? I don't know. They, they... Yeah. The amount of time we would probably want if we had to write this, we'd be like, we need to figure out exactly what this entity wants, what it can do, and then we need to plant some early as fuck seeds that are going to have great payoffs later, because this thing is basically in full control, and they, they lost from the beginning, you know, that sort of thing. But someone might be like, well, that's a bit depressing. It's like, well, we'll try and find a way to beat it, of course, but it, mm -hmm. you walked yourselves into this. <laughs> like, this is what you wanted, I guess. I don't know. It's your fault. Uh, between the little three animal buddies in Kirby's Dreamland 2, who's your favorite? I, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I didn't play it, so. it. I didn't play it either, sorry. As a gay actor, Michael Douglas, mine is Koo. Gay people love owls, yo. And finally, Lord Longbong of Mewsington Abbey. Is there any good chance of a Kong fab of Peter Jackson's Long Kong? When there's less going on, it be a movie fab for the ages. Yes. Oh, well, Waxy's yeah. scritches for the. Oh, thanks very much. I appreciate that. Yeah, I think there's a good chance of checking out that Long Kong at some point. I think there is a when very good chance. Going on for sure. Yeah. Yeah. When there is less going on. Not uh, impossible I, yeah. that it would be looked at when things are going on as well, but more yeah. than likely when there's less stuff going on. Yep. But yeah. Thank you so much for all those kind messages. We are going to. Go ahead and wrap up there for the Mission Impossible Super Chat catch up. Dun, 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 it was a uh, it was a good time. Thank you so much for your your, your messages, donation. We'll uh, see you in the next app thing. Whatever. Yeah, we'll see you later. Bye. Bye. Mission bye, accomplished. Bye. <laughs> yeah, that's right. See you. Bye. Bye.